Hello, God bless you. My name is Stephen. I'm the pastor of Graffiti Fellowship in Brooklyn, New York, and it's time for today's daily devotion. Our daily devotion series is where we take a chapter from the Bible and read it together each day. Uh, we post these videos five days a week, and they are there for you at any time you want to access them. And we hope we hope that you strive for that uh, five day a week um, goal. And if you miss a day, that's okay. Just pick up where you left off tomorrow. Okay. Forgive yourself. John chapter 8, 59 verses, and at the end of John chapter 7, I, I read a little uh, note that's included that says that the last verse of John chapter 7, which is verse 53, and then the first 11 verses of John chapter 8, so verses 1 through 11 of John chapter 8, these are included in many of the Greek manuscripts we have. Greek was the is the language that the New Testament was originally written in. The oldest manuscripts we have found do not include these 12 verses. Many manuscripts do, of course, that's how we have these verses, but the oldest manuscripts do not have this section, and so um, the authors, the translators, uh, I should say, just want to be clear about that, and so that note is included here. Let's read together now John chapter 8, beginning in verse 1. Jesus returned to the Mount of Olives, but early the next morning he was back again at the temple. A crowd soon gathered, and he sat down and taught them. And as he was speaking, teachers of the religious law and the Pharisees brought in a woman who had been caught in the act of adultery. They put her in front of the crowd. Teacher, they said to Jesus, this woman was caught in the act of adultery, and the law of Moses says to stone her. That means to throw rocks at her until she dies. What do you say? They were trying to trap him into saying something they could use against him, but Jesus stooped down and wrote in the dust with his finger. They kept demanding an answer, so he stood up again and he said, All right, but let the one who has never sinned throw the first stone. Then he stooped down again and wrote in the dust. When the accusers heard this, they slipped away one by one, beginning with the oldest, until only Jesus was left in the middle of the crowd with the woman. Then Jesus stood up again and said to the woman, Where are your ancestors? Didn't even one of them condemn you? Uh, excuse me, not your ancestors. Where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? No, Lord, she said. And Jesus said, Neither do I. Go and sin no more. Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I'm the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. The Pharisees replied, you're making those claims about yourself. Such testimony is not valid. And Jesus told them, these claims are valid, even though I make them about myself, for I know where I came from. I know where I'm going, but you don't know this about me. You judge me by human standards, but I don't judge anyone. And even if I did, my judgment would be correct in every respect, because I am not alone. The Father who sent me is with me. Your own law says that if two people agree about something, their witness is accepted as fact. I'm one witness. My Father who sent me is the other. Well, where is your Father, they asked. And Jesus answered, since you don't know who I am, you don't know who my Father is. If you knew me, you would also know my Father. Jesus made these statements while he was teaching in the section of the temple known as the treasury. He was not arrested because his time had not yet come. Later, Jesus said to them again, I'm going away. You'll search for me, but will die in your sin. You cannot come where I'm going. The people asked, is he planning to commit suicide? What does he mean you can't come where I'm going? And Jesus continued, you're from below. I'm from above. You belong to this world. I do not. That is why I said you'll die in your sins. For unless you believe that I am who I claim to be, you'll die in your sins. Who are you? They demanded. Jesus replied, I'm the one I've always claimed to be. I have much to say about you and much to condemn, but I won't. For I say only what I've heard from the one who sent me, and he is completely truthful. But they still didn't understand he was talking about his father. So Jesus said, when you have lifted up the Son of Man on a cross, then you will understand that I am he. I do nothing on my own, but say only what the Father has taught me. And when the one who sent me is with me, he's not deserted me. For I always do what pleases him. And then many who heard him say these things believed in him. Jesus said to the people who believed in him, You are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teaching. 
and you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. But we are descendants of Abraham, they said. We've never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean we'll be set free? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave of sin. A slave is not a permanent member of the family, but a son is part of the family forever. So if the son sets you free, you're truly free. Yes, I realize you're descendants of Abraham. And yet some of you are trying to kill me because there's no room in your hearts for my message. I'm telling you what I saw when I was with my father. But you're following the vice of your father. Our father's Abraham, they declared. No, Jesus replied, for if you were really the children of Abraham, you'd follow his example. Instead, you're trying to kill me because I told you the truth, which I heard from God. Abraham never did such a thing. No, you're imitating your real father. We aren't illegitimate children. God himself is our true father. And Jesus told him, if God were your father, you would love me because I've come to you from God. I'm not here on my own, but he sent me. Why can't you understand what I'm saying? It's because you can't even hear me, for you are the children of your father, the devil. And you love to do the evil things he does. He was a murderer from the beginning. He's always hated the truth because there's no truth in him. When he lies, it is consistent with his character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. So when I tell the truth, you just naturally don't believe me. Which of you can truthfully accuse me of sin? And since I'm telling you the truth, why don't you believe me? Anyone who belongs to God listens gladly to the words of God, but you don't listen because you don't belong to God. The people retorted, You Samaritan devil, didn't we say all along you were possessed by a demon? No, Jesus said, I have no demon in me. I honor my Father. You dishonor me. And though I have no wish to glorify myself, God is going to glorify me. He's the true judge. I tell you the truth, anyone who obeys my teaching will never die. And the people said, Now we know you are possessed by a demon. Even Abraham and the prophets died, but you say anyone who obeys my teaching will never die. Are you greater than our father Abraham? He died, and so did the prophets. Who do you think you are? Jesus answered, If I want glory for myself, it doesn't count. But it is my Father who will glorify me. You say he is our God, but you don't even know him. I know him. If I had said otherwise, I would be as great a liar as you, but I do know him and obey him. Your father Abraham rejoiced as he looked forward to my coming. He saw it and was glad. The people said, you aren't even 50 years old. How can you say you've seen Abraham? And Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. Before Abraham was even born, I am. At that point, they picked up stones to throw at him. But Jesus was hidden from them and left the temple. That concludes John chapter 8. Thank you so much for participating in today's daily devotion. I hope it's blessed you. If you think it might bless others, please feel free to share. Uh, Your participation today has certainly blessed us, and we hope you'll join us again next time for John chapter 9. God bless you.